my mother would say, put your life jacket on. The kayak, you can, you can get a really, a really nice angle and it's a nice perspective because you're so low to the water. Being on the water is my passion. And in the Chesapeake Bay, we're so fortunate to have this incredible resource right in our backyards. And for me, the draw to the water is to always find something different. So with the lighting conditions, the sea conditions, with the season, with what people are harvesting, there's always good. something different for me to see on the water. You've got a lot of detail in that reflection, and that's from getting really low. As the sun sets off Hooper's Island on Maryland's eastern shore, the bay appears a quiet expanse, but documentary photographer Jay Fleming knows that these waters are teeming with life and history and stories to be told. Yeah, I love shooting kind of at dusk and dawn to capture the nice soft light. My job takes me to so many different places and photography is really the vehicle that gets me out and that drives me to these unique places that I would never otherwise have the opportunity to see. So for me, it's a matter of getting out and exploring and doing something different every day. That's, that's what I love most about my job. For Fleming, it began in his teen years with a mission to document the people and resources of the region, one image at a time. I developed an affinity for the water before I developed an affinity for photography. So the photography kind of legitimized me going out on the water so much. My mom would always get on my case that I was out fishing too much. And she was right, but I had my camera with me. And little did she know that I would be going out fishing with so many different people up and down the East Coast and sharing experiences. And I'm kind of doing the same thing that I did when I was in high school. Really, I've just become a lot better at it and a lot better at sharing it with other people. So, she's probably laughing now. Fleming's acclaimed first book, Working the Water, took him more than three years and countless miles to chronicle those who make their living from the bay. Working the Water is a visual narrative of the Chesapeake Bay seafood industry, and of the different fisheries and the different businesses, and also the individuals that depend upon the natural resources of the Chesapeake Bay for their income and for their livelihood. So I spent three years working on this book, and it starts in the spring as the waters are warming up in the Chesapeake Bay and goes through the different fisheries like the fike netting fishery for perch. And then I kind of move on to the different fisheries like gill netting for rockfish in the late spring in Virginia and the Potomac River. I talk about boat building and boat maintenance to kind of illustrate some of the hidden costs in the seafood business that people don't see. The reason for me really choosing to document the working side of the Chesapeake Bay was to, to show one of the more traditional businesses in Maryland. The state of Maryland was really founded upon the agriculture industry and the seafood business. This is kind of one of the backbones of the Chesapeake Bay, and a lot of these people have been working in this business for generations. These businesses have kind of been untouched by time in a lot of ways. You, you really get a sense of nostalgia through these photographs, but you know they were taken only a few years ago. Come on board, Cap. All right. Through my photography, I've developed a lot of friendships and a lot of different relationships with the people that I've photographed. And it's important for me to know people, to hear their stories and to understand them before I publish images of them or before I even take pictures of them. I like what he does because he, uh, it gives it a face of the job and he portrays that in his portraits that we're a working class people. This is a heritage. I'm fifth generation that's worked on the water and he gets to show that, and he puts a face on it, and I love that. Got out early, we left the dock at 5 a.m. The light eventually came up, and we had some really nice dramatic clouds as a backdrop for the pound netting. I appreciate you letting me come out. It oh, makes, my, it makes my job welcome. easy. I think, I think you're welcome in the whole community because they love what you do and portraying what, our way of life, and that's what we need for people to see. You know, when I had the pictures that I needed, I figured I'd help the crew and you know help call some of the some of the fish out that they were throwing over. With fish and a camera, I'm always happy. Thank you, Boo. Right, Appreciate man. it, bud. Take care. Yeah. Until next time. All right. Come on back. Right. For Fleming, photography is a way to capture and preserve the unique characters and environments of an aging and changing Chesapeake region, whether it's out on a boat or taking an underwater dive.
So I do a lot of underwater photography in the Chesapeake Bay. These are actually two of my favorite images from the Tangier Sound area. So a lot of people ask like how long it took to get that image. Well, it took a long time to get there, but this image happened in like one 250th of a second. It's just a matter of being there at the right place at the right time. Underwater photography is an incredibly valuable tool to show people what the bottom of the bay looks like. Show people who live in the Chesapeake watershed, you know, what it looks like, where their crabs come from and where their fish comes from. So this photograph was taken during January of 2018 and the shallow areas around Smith Island and Tangier froze over. So Tangier and Smith Island are both kind of waterlocked. Boat traffic couldn't get to the islands. And I took a plane out there, a little Cessna, and I was the only non-islander out there. So I was ecstatic to be out there. So maybe I'll pull up like a couple different pictures. Right now, I'm kind of focusing on Tangier and Smith Island for my forthcoming book, Island Life. You know, these islands have become not the ideal place to live, even for the watermen. One area on Tangier Island um, that I've taken pictures of called the Uppards is eroding at a rate of about 19 feet a year. It's difficult sometimes to talk about the fate of the islands in the Chesapeake Bay, especially with the communities like Smith Island and Tangier, because you know, I've really become close to a lot of people out there. And, you know, really develop a love for the islands. You know, it is important to look into the future and to, to figure out how these communities can sustain themselves. So this photograph that we're looking at is of the last house on Holland Island. Mother Nature and the Chesapeake Bay eventually got the best of the island and the house fell in the fall of 2010. That house reflecting into the water kind of gives you a feel that it's like melting into the water, which is kind of symbolic of you know, the fate of the house. This image really proved to me that it's important to get out and document these islands. You know, in 100, 200 years, you know, all that we might have to remember these islands are photography and stories and, uh, you know, narrative from the people who live out there. There are few, if any, out there that have so thoroughly documented life in the Chesapeake Bay region. And for Fleming, there is an obligation, an urgency, to preserve a quickly changing way of life the crab processing industry, or crab picking, is something that's unique to the Chesapeake Bay. The bay used to have quite a few crab picking houses. I think now it's down to about 20 maybe, if that. What Jay is doing, he's documenting the life that we have here. It's documenting for future generations. We'll know our way of life. That is a cool sign, Janet, old fashioned. So he's captured it in a way nobody else that I've ever seen capture it. It's important for me to have a good relationship with the people that I'm photographing because it makes it easier for me to effectively tell the story of what they're doing. I guess you just love the people. I guess he just loves the people, the way of life. He's got to in order to be able to capture, to take the time to capture what he captures on film. He's got to love it, period. Janet, did your mother work here too? Well, there's a lot of great feelings. The connection that I build with people through the photography is that's the most satisfying part of my job.